My name is Lorraine Brooks, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to the art of my uncle, Keith Simon. Keith was born in 1922 in what was then British Honduras and is now Belize. He was the youngest of the six children of Dr. Keith Simon from Dominica and Catherine Craig Simon from Guyana. As a young boy, Keith and his family lived in many places, including Belize, Kingston, Jamaica, Canada, and the United States. Keith began his art education in New York City at the Benjamin Franklin High School in Harlem, where he studied under sculptor John B. Kenny and where he earned the prestigious St. Gordon's Medal for Excellence in Drawing. He later attended Howard University in Washington, D.C., where he studied painting under Lois Jones and James Porter before leaving the U.S. in 1952 to live in London. Artists are often drawn to places and histories that capture their imagination and Keith was no different. In many of his paintings, human figures are juxtaposed against the geometric shapes and forms that echo the pre-Columbian Mayan structures of his native Belize. In my work, there is an overlay of disparate influences, all of these making their contribution to the subject and style. The sagacious eye may discern a universality of elements. Why are these elements there, you may ask? They are there because they are appropriate to the sort of painter I wish to be. Keith Simon's work is both scholarly and personal. He has achieved that which all working artists strive to use the lessons of the past, to create images that are new to the world, but also reflect the artist's personal values and perspective. Simon's paintings represent an intersection of the European tradition, post-World War II modernism, and the pre-Columbian art of his childhood. There are direct references to cubism, surrealism, expressionism, even pointillism. As many expat artists before him, Keith absorbed European modernism, but he thought of himself as an American artist above all. It was the pre-Columbian art of the Americas and not the art of Africa, as Picasso and Brock referenced in the development of Cubism, that attracted him the most. Perhaps the sole point I wish to make is that I do consider myself an American artist in the most general sense of the term, and the inspiration for my work is to be found more in the forms of pre-Columbian architecture and sculpture, and in the woven and painted textiles of pre-conquest Peru, than in Parisian cubism. Keith Simon was masterful in his absorption in processing the past to create in the present. This is not always a successful process. Exploring your influence often leads to derivative or redundant works of art. This is why Simon's work stands head and shoulders above the crowd. Finally, at a late age, I decided to limit the exploration of new worlds or ideas and instead to fill out and expand the material already explored. It is the human figure which has always enchanted me with its wonderful architecture and compositional possibilities. Its parts and details are in themselves fascinating. Hands, heads, torsos, backs, feet, ears. Thus an examination of my work will reveal an overwhelming interest in the human form. For better or worse, it is what most humans understand. His many drawings of the nude male could easily place him in a genre of contemporary gay art, 
but as, for, as far as we know, he did not particularly identify as a gay artist, although according to Lorraine Brooks, his niece and benefactor of much of his unsold work, his homosexuality was well known to all his family members. Viewing his paintings and drawings of the male nude, and knowing that he did not destroy them as many artists or their heirs might have done in the past, I wonder if he left them to his estate for a more open-minded future generation to view. I don't think we can ever know, but these powerful pieces of the male figure are the work of a talented, mature artist, fluent in the language of cubist flattening of space and form, while capable of expressive line and mark-making. I hope that these remarks will cast sufficient light upon my efforts to enable the viewer to plot his own way in understanding them. I would much rather let the works do the talking.